Oh, lift your hands up and get another drink. None worse than a straight Christian. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Stay filled, the word says. Be filled, be filled, be filled. No fill, no will. His will. Only His will. Other than that, you do your will. Amen. No fill, no will of God. All glory. You know, I, I, I can't express what's happening so much. I mean, there's so much going on, it's phenomenal. Ah, oh, hallelujah. Uh, turn to Psalm 19, please. We are in a prophetic shift. You might call it a holy shift, but it's still prophetic. Amen. We are in prophetic times of fulfillment. Amen. Amen. And we are the generation that is alive here now to watch the whole world change. The whole world is changing right before our eyes. It's changing because God is invading the world. His spirit is invading the world. And he has been waiting for a certain event to happen. It was a prophetic word that had to be released. And the ripple of that effect has changed the whole world where we are right now. In Psalm 19, in verse 12. Let's speak it. Who can understand his errors? errors? Cleanse me from secret faults. Keep back your servant also from assumption or presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be what? Blameless. Blameless. Come on, speak it with me. I shall be innocent of great transgression. Here's, are you ready for this now? Let the what? Words of my mouth and the med meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. What is he saying here? He's saying, look at no assuming. And the only way that you're going to stop assuming is to start looking or seeing. Looking or seeing. In other words, in this right now, when he says meditate, that means see. Does everybody get it? Meditate means to see. He said, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable. In other words, he wants to align the things that he's releasing that you see to be released through your mouth. When that happens, it becomes a prophetic word. Not a pathetic word. What does this happen? It turns ordinary words to life-giving and changing words. It turns ordinary words to life-changing and life-giving. These are prophetic words. These are not words of the soulish arena or of the flesh. These are words of the Spirit. That's why it's essential to be filled with the Spirit. That's where the word says, walk in the spirit, live in the spirit. We are in a time right now where prophetic words are essential because we are seeing prophetic events being fulfilled that have been prophesied by the word of God. And in your personal life, there should be a prophetic word that's constantly being released on your behalf. We just did prophetic music. When you spoke the words of that music by the Spirit, you have sown into the Spirit and you reap life. You have prophesied in your own life. That's why worship is the only arena where you can connect with that releases revelation and keeps you filled. Because without being filled, you'll have false revelation. Without being filled, you'll be deceived. That's why the word says, forsake not to assemble. 
Forsake not to assemble. Why? Because he says, I want you to be filled. There isn't anything greater than corporate worship. Listen, my life didn't change until I finally went to a corporate worship. When I left that corporate worship is when I had the visitation from the Lord. Amen. Nothing happened to me in that worship because I didn't know how to worship. I cried. Something was going on. Amen. Something was tugging in my heart. I began to realize how, what a bonehead I've been most of my life. I really didn't understand wickedness and evilness and what was good and what was righteous. I mean, I knew it was good and evil, but I didn't really understand the fullness of it. But it began to be revealed by the Holy Spirit. And when I left that service that morning, and it was just a prayer meeting, they were worshiping. And I really didn't even know how to participate that much. But I did everything that I could. And when I left that service... That afternoon is when I had my visitation from the Lord because I obeyed what he asked to do. Assemble. 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 Without being assemble, one who assembles, you can't assemble nothing. Amen. Nothing of God. That's how God builds the house. He first causes you to assemble. Then he begins to build your house. In Romans chapter 8, Romans chapter 8 and verse 15. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Assembling causes everything to fall in line. Why? Because as you get filled, you're being reset, refreshed, renewed. Your boundaries are being reset. Amen. And you know what happens? Your priorities are being reset. Amen. What you thought you were doing in the priorities, you begin to realize, man, that ain't right. Snap, I need to change this. One of the things about assembling because of corporate worship, one of the things you realize what begins to happen is you're either in time or out of time. You're either in God's time or in your own time. And then you find out that fear is pushing or misleading. Or there's things that you're not fulfilling where God is saying, man, you ain't done this yet and you're asking for more? Finish that and let's talk about it. Amen. Romans 8, 15. Oh, glory. For you did not receive, oh no, 14, I'm sorry, 14. How could I miss that? And let's start with 13. Is everybody there? For if you live according to the flesh, you what? You're going to die. You're going to what? Die. There is no gray area here. It's real simple. If you live according to the flesh, you will die. In other words, you'll be separated from the presence of God. But if you live by the Spirit, you put to death the deeds of the body, you will what? Live. live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are called sons of God. Sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to what? Fear. Fear but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness, bears witness with our spirit that we are what? children of God, and if children, then heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if we indeed suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. It says here that the Spirit bears witness. What he does is he quickens you. He quickens you. There's a quickening. What's he trying to do? He gets your attention. He quickens you. He's bearing witness. This is not the same arena as somebody who's a witness. This is the spirit bearing witness within you. He quickens you. He touches you. He says, hey, for your attention. And sometimes he's saying, look it. What is he saying? Look it. Look at this. See this. See and receive. See and receive. 
How many of y'all know, look at the greatest thing that God wants, and I'll share this over and over, as a father to his sons and daughters, is that his children sees what he sees. That is the greatest joy of a father, is that his children see what he sees. In Proverbs 18. Hallelujah. In verse 20, Proverbs 18, verse 20. Let's speak it. A man's stomach shall be satisfied from the fruit of his what? His mouth. Those are prophetic words that are released and it's fulfillment. From the produce of his lips, he shall be what? Filled. That's praise and worship. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. That word power is representation of what is backing your motive or attitude while you're speaking. Who, what breath or what spirit is backing what you're saying? If it's of the flesh, it's death. If it's of the spirit, it's life. Amen? Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will what? Eat its fruit. Wow. So we see here that the spirit will bear witness. He'll quicken me and you to look and see and then speak and release. But death and life is in the power or the tongue. That's either a spirit of the, what spirit it is. It's either flesh or the spirit of God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12. First Corinthians chapter 12. In verse 1. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1. Let's speak it. Now concerning spiritual gifts, gifts are tools. They are tools. And they are the tools of the Spirit for me and you to use. My, now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. For you know that you were Gentiles carried away to these dumb idols, however you were led. Therefore I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed, and no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are diversities of gifts by the same Spirit. Again, these are tools that are released by the Holy Spirit. There are diversities of ministries by the Lord. In other words, there are certain types of ministries that are associated with these gifts. And this is the Lord Jesus' overseer of them. The Holy Spirit is overseer of the gifts. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. And who is the overseer of everything? God the Father. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. Now, manifestation, I think people have a hard time with the word manifestation sometimes. They always think that there's got to be something that happens right then and there to someone many times manifestation is known as revelation or illumination. Somebody get it? That, that sometimes, and, and when Jesus releases a word, he releases a prophetic word through an individual. And it's not just a prophetic word of a word. That word should be expressing him also through his character. Amen. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit. Now, it doesn't mean that one person is going to have the word of wisdom. 
If you are filled with the Spirit of God, you have all the gifts. Amen. Amen? I had someone tell me one day, he was a preacher too, but he was totally out of order. He came up to me and said, I can, interpret, take, I can interpret tongues. I said, do you pray in tongues? He said, no. I didn't go there. I just said, yeah, okay. I left. Again, so all of the gifts, but Paul designates each one to bring understanding. So he says one is given, amen, the word of knowledge through the same spirit. Wisdom, word of knowledge, verse 9, to another faith by the same spirit, to another gifts of healings by the same spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues and to another the interpretation of tongues but it all lies on something very powerful tongues when someone says to me says i have discerning of the spirits i see demons everywhere i say you're a gornola because that's not what it means discerning of spirits means you are able to discern a motive or an attitude it doesn't mean you're going to see demons all over the place. People who see demons all over the place usually have them. Amen. Because the demons are using their eyes. Amen. We see fruits of the spirits. Amen? Amen. That's what God re reveals to us. Unless he chooses to show you something. You know. But hallelujah. So anyways, all of this. So the gifts of the spirit are not man's gifts. They're the Holy Spirit's gifts. They're the tools. And he wants us to cooperate with them. But if you're not filled and baptized in the Holy Spirit, let me tell you something. Gifts are not manifested. Amen. That's why somebody has to rely on someone else. So we must be filled with the Spirit to release the gifts of the Spirit. One of the things that he always wants us to do, all of these gifts are associated with something very important. A prophetic word. Every gift is associated with a prophetic word. Every gift. That's the end result is a prophetic word to be released. So there's something that must start in the beginning. You must be able to see. And this is not out of the soulish arena or the flesh. This is out of the mind of the Spirit of God. And he uses your imagination to communicate. It is the window that you're able to see through. We call it our mind sometimes. People call it the eye's mind or whatever, but it's actually the imagination of a person. But that imagination shall not be soulish. It must be separated from the soul and the flesh and be associated with the Spirit of God because that is the mind of Christ. Is everybody okay? Okay. The level of your connection with the presence of God will be associated with the level of your faith. The level of your alignment with the Word of God. You know, if I was to walk around the room today and say, hey, what's the Lord showing you? If you were to give me a scripture, I'd take the mic and pop you on the head. Amen. That's not what God is showing you. Does everybody get it? That, now God is not showing you a scripture. He is showing you something. Now it can be back with a scripture. Amen. But when the prophetic word comes, he shows you. You see it. You usually see a picture and a word appears. Uh, you know, you ever hear the saying that a picture is worth a thousand words? Well, you got to put it all into one word. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that God doesn't give you scriptures. He gives me scriptures every morning to speak. But when there's a prophetic release into the atmosphere, there's usually a, he shows you something. Not that you can't release prophetic words through the scriptures. Don't get me wrong, because we speak it every day. The letter kills, the spirit brings life, though. Amen? 
So when you see, you're able to release it. Why? Because the perf purpose of a prophetic word is to bring light into darkness. It is to bring life into de where death was. It is to bring truth where there is deception. It is to bring conviction where there is sin. All of these are so... It is to bring healing where there is sickness. It is to bring freedom where there is bondage. That is the perfect purpose of a prophetic word to be released. It's also to bring abundance where there's debt because the word of God when it is directed by the spirit of God when it is released it is penetrating nothing can hold it back remember the centurion soldier that said to the Lord look at my got a servant that's ill he said look at if you'll just speak the word in other words release the prophetic word I know he'll be healed and the Lord said, man, you got some good faith. I like this. Give me five. You know? <laughs> First Corinthians chapter 2. So does God want you to release prophetic words? Yes. yes. Not pathetic, prophetic. Not soulish, not fleshly. Those that are led by the Spirit. But if you're not filled with the Spirit, if you're not connected... It isn't going to happen. You'll release words that can bring damage. Amen. First Corinthians 2. You're of a responder. First Corinthians 2 verse 13. Is everybody there? Amen. These things we also speak, not, come on, not in words which man's wisdom teaches or understands, but what the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolish to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. That is going to take according to the Spirit of the living God. The Holy Spirit is the one who interprets the Word of God. Verse, six, uh, verse 15. But he who is spiritual judges all things. Hello. So when somebody says, man, you're judging me. You bet your sweet bippy I am. I'm judging your fruit. Not you as a person. I'm judging your fruit. If you come up to me and have a cigar and a bottle of wine in your hand, you say, look, I got a word for you. I say, I got a word for you. So I won't take words from people that I don't see are connected. Amen. Because they're too easily swayed. Oh, hallelujah. Is everybody okay? Amen. Let's go a little further. It says in verse 15, But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. Why? Because God judges him or her. Verse 16, for who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the what? The mind of Christ. The mind of Christ. These are the thoughts and intents of, intentions of God through the gifts and the, or the tools of the Holy Spirit that we are releasing. It's for ministry. It's for ministry of ourself. It's for ministry of others. Amen. When people come to counsel, I always ask for the counsel, correction, and direction by the Holy Spirit. He will release a word of knowledge, word of wisdom, whatever it is. But I'm not looking to label, let's see, which one is this? Gosh, I don't know if I can release it if I don't get the, which one this is. No, you just flow. Oh, man, was that the word of knowledge or word of wisdom? It was a word from the Lord. Get out of the way. <laughs> Hallelujah. Remember, the, the, uh, through the Spirit of God, the release by the prophetic words that it brings light to darkness. It will bring exhortation and comfort, and it always brings glory to Jesus. 
It brings, like I said, conviction. It is not letter, it is revelation. It's not letter, it's revelation. And it can only come by your connection to the presence of God. Amen? That's why sometimes during the day you'll be singing, oh, can't nobody do me like Jesus, you know. Oh, happy day. I sing that all day long. Oh, happy day. When Jesus washed. Second Peter chapter 1. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Second Pete chapter 1. Verse 19. Verse 19. Let's speak it. And so we have the what? Prophetic word confirmed. Which you do well to heed as a light that shines in dark place. Until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Knowing this first that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. For a prophecy never came by the will of man. But by holy men of God spoke as they were what? Moved by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Moved by the Holy Spirit. The prophetic word is confirmed. It was given by the Holy Spirit. That means it was manifested. It brought illumination. It brought revelation. It brought something. It brought light into darkness. It brought truth into deception. 1 John chapter 2. First John chapter 2, verse 26. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? These things I have written to you concerning those who what? Right. Try to what? Deceive you, mislead you. But the anointing, everyone say the anointing. anointing. Anybody remember what the anointing is? It's the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty carried by the Holy Spirit. But the anointing which you have heard from him abides in you. And you do not need anyone to what? Teach you. Why? But as the same anointing teaches you. So can you receive a prophetic word through teaching? Yes. In fact, teaching should be a prophetic word. Amen. Amen. If it's not backed by the anointing, it's not a prophetic word. Amen. But as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things and is true and is not a lie, and just as it is taught you, you will abide in Him. Again, the anointing, the eternal power, presence, and truth of God Almighty, carried by the Holy Spirit, teaches us with words or prophetic words. It's life giving words. Life-changing words. But for some individuals, they must be willing to believe. They must be willing to receive. And then they must be willing to execute it in their own lives. Amen? Or else it doesn't become a prophetic word. It starts off as a prophetic word, but then they kill it. Is everybody all right? Again, they must be able to believe, receive, and execute it or release it into their own lives. Romans 16. Jesus said, my words are life. <laughs> Why? Because they were prophetic. Romans 16. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? Amen. 
verse 25. It says, Now to him who is able to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret since the world began, but now made what? Manifest, revealed. And by the prophetic scriptures or prophetic words made known to all nations according to the commandment of the everlasting God for the obedience to the faith. To God alone wise be glory through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. The prophetic word manifest. Manifest is to see, behold, reveal, discern, and experience. I'll say it again. It is when, when it says manifest, it means to see, to behold, to reveal, to discern, and to experience. The Holy Spirit does just not manifest the Word of God. He manifests God himself. In John chapter 1. Hallelujah. John chapter 1. Prophetic word. The, the title is Prophetic Words. Does everybody get it? I thought some of you got it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prophetic words. Not pathetic words. In John chapter 1 verse 14. And the word became flesh. The prophetic word became physical. And dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. Why? Because beheld or behold means associated with manifest. His glory. The glory of the only begotten of the Father full of grace and truth. Go back to verse 10. This is how I would have written it anyways. But. <laughs> and he was in the world. <laughs> Who? The word. <laughs> and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own. Why? He brought the prophetic word. Amen? Amen. He was the prophetic word manifested in the physical realm. God Almighty, the eternal presence, power, and truth was manifested in the physical realm. Walking in a human body. Now, for your body, my body, we couldn't contain it. So he had to create one of himself. He created it out of the word. Other than that, that body could not contain that presence. Amen? Amen? And it says he was in the world and the world was made through him and the world did not know him. And he came to his own and his own did not receive him. So they couldn't, if they didn't receive it, they couldn't change. But as many as received him, believed him and executed it, to them he gave the right to become children of God to those who believed in his name, who were born out of blood, nor the will of flesh, nor the will of man, but born by the Spirit of the living God. That's a difference. Amen? Again, there's a difference between saved and born again. Amen. There's a lot of people who got saved, but there's a, many more people who are born again. Or maybe. Mm -hmm. There's a difference between living in the outer court and a holy place. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The word of life, prophetic word, became manifest. That ripple effect has been everlasting and life-changing. The levels of prophetic words are sometimes 
can be personal. It can be territorial. It can become national. And it can become global. I hear people sometimes say, yes, the Lord's called me to be a prophet. Let me share something about prophet, the office of a prophet. It's, I don't want to say it's a call, it's a visit. Amen. When God calls someone to become a prophet, he visits them. And he visits them more than once. <laughs> he speaks to them in a different way. Not that, uh, I don't, not that we can't move in the gift of prophecy. Amen? But a, a, when a prophet, a true prophet is a prophet usually of the nation. Other than that, people just moved in the gift of prophets and they call themselves prophets, prophecy. Or they moved in the gift of prophecy and they call themselves prophets, which is really not true. Amen? Because you and anyone in this room can move in the gift of prophecy. It doesn't make you a prophet. You can pray for someone and, and, and God heals them. It doesn't mean that you have a ministry of healing. Amen. Although everything should be healing no matter what, some way or another. Amen. I mean, isn't that the end result? Is that God heals and frees his people. Now, Donald Trump declared one of the changes of the globe. He declared something powerful that changed the whole world. And this is where we are now. Because God put him in office. He interrupted Satan's plan. And he put Donald Trump, a businessman, a man who really didn't know the Lord very well, but he's beginning to learn more and more and learn, knowing him more and more and more. God said that I, 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 I'll, I'll anoint him, but he really won't know me until he's in, in office for a little while. <laughs> but he spoke a prophetic word that changed the whole world. And that prophetic word was, we will move the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem. That prophetic word, when it was released, changed the world. It's changed everything. That one prophetic word has changed, and it's changing now. It has caused nations to change right now. God is replacing leaders of other nations all over the place because of this prophetic word that was released. It is a global word that was released by a president of the United States. Because the last president brought shame, disorder, much damage to this country and to the world. In fact, he rejected Israel. Obama rejected Israel. And even in the United Nations Assembly, rebuked Israel. We were in trouble because of that mouth of his. Because what he spoke hurt the United States and hurt the world. You got to remember something. The United States is Israel. Does everybody get it? It's a spiritual Israel. It's, it's, it was to take over what Israel rejected until Israel picks back up what the United States started. Oh, hallelujah. That ripple effect of what President Trump spoke, it shifted everything. We are in a new season. It is different. The enemy is screaming. He's being exposed more and more and more. Light from what he spoke is now light is more penetrating darkness. I don't know if you know or not, but there are more sealed indictments to pick up individuals. And there's been more arrests. See, they don't show you on, on TV. They don't show you on the news. You have to go on the internet and look and see what's been going on. And people show up all of the arrests through the documents because they're free. Let me tell you, they just busted so many human traffickers and sex things. And especially in all, a lot of these movie stars have been arrested. They're not showing you all of that. 
And now you got the Democratic Party who's suing Israel, uh, uh, Russia. How do you sue a country? Only they can be that stupid to attempt to. I mean, it's incredible to me. Remember, the whole focus right now is to bring down light. The whole focus right now is to change in truth to lies. Their whole focus right now. Without the body of Christ resisting and holding back the demonic forces right now, this world will be a mess. But I'm telling you, they're planning for me and you to leave. Satan's kingdom can't wait for us to leave. They know that the rapture is coming. And they got a quick plan to get as much as they can get done in three and a half years while we're gone. So right now, you and I are the resistance. We're the interrupters. And we have a right to release a prophetic word by the Spirit of the living God. If you're in the Spirit, walking in the Spirit, and if you're allowing them to quicken you to be sensitive so you can see and release. Oh, hallelujah. John chapter 4. While we're in John. John 4, 22. Is everybody okay? Amen. So when the word of God is not backed by the spirit of God, it's not a prophetic word. It's a seed. Amen? Amen. That's what's the difference between the sword of the spirit and the seed. It must be backed by the anointing. In verse 22, you were, oh, let's start at verse 21 so people get an understanding. Jesus said to the woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour is coming and now is when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship Him. The Father is seeking such. Now remember this. Remember when Jesus said, Who do you say that I am? And Peter said, You are the Son of God. You are the Christ. And Jesus said, No man, is, no man gave that to you, but my Father is in heaven. Why? Because the Father released the revelation to Him, didn't He? See, so here you have worship is a place where revelation will be released because you're making connection with the presence of God. For the Father is seeking such to worship Him. God is spirit and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and in truth. Again, worship is the key to revelation. From, is the key to the revelation from God to the Holy Spirit to you. But you must be filled with and stay focused. Amen. You must be filled and focused. Everyone say filled yeah. and focused. 2 Timothy 1. Glory. 2 Timothy 1. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In verse 6. Let's speak it. Therefore I what? Remind you. I remind you to do what? Stir up the gift which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but power and love and a sound 
mind. Stir up the gifts to overcome fear. With what? With worship. Stir up the gifts of worship. Stir up the gifts of praying in tongues. Don't. <laughs> worship, worship, worship. Worship. That's why it's important that we do not lack assembling, right? Amen. Let's go to Jude. Jude 16. Father looks for true worshipers. Worshiper, worship is the key to revelation, which also relief prophetic word. So it's our, whose responsibility is to stir it up? Ours. Ours. Jude 16, or Jude 6, yeah, verse 16. Let's speak it. There are grumblers, complainers walking according to their own lusts. They will mouth great swelling words. Those are called pathetic words. Amen. Flattering people to gain advantage. But you, beloved, remember the words which were spoken before by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. And how they told you that there would be mockers in the last time who would walk according to their own ungodly lusts. These are central persons who cause the visions not having the Spirit or being filled with the Spirit or connected to the Spirit. But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in tongues. That's praying in the Holy Spirit. That's how you stir yourself up. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And on some have compassion, making a distinction. It's called discerning of spirits. But others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. Now to him who's able to keep you from stumbling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever and ever and ever. And I want to close it one more scripture before we say amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Did I give you the scripture? Aha, uh -huh. you were listening. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. We're going to do something different today. While we are preparing our hearts for communion, I'm going to send my wife around everyone to anoint you. And then I'm going to pray for everyone that's been anointed. Amen? We're going to release a prophetic word that everyone has the anointing on them. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. Let's speak it. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even no one knows the things of God except for the Spirit of God. And again, we've not received, now we have received not the Spirit of the what? The world, 
but the Spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us so that you and I could release a prophetic word. Amen? And we're just going to ask the Holy Spirit to release a prophetic word corporately today. So, Father, we are honored and blessed. We thank you for your word. We ask that this word be imparted into each member of our being. And that it would grow and bear fruit for your glory. And that we would be sensitive to the quickening within us. And that your kingdom and your will will be manifested in us and through us as prophetic words are released in Jesus' name. Nobody said amen? amen.